my friends what is going on welcome back to the channel let's do a quick little update here uh, today is november 4th we have obviously a very big day tomorrow with the election coming up probably a pretty good chance that we aren't going to know who the president is going to be tomorrow um at the end of the day you know, I just want you to vote for whoever you think is best for the country. Um, so let's get in here, do a quick little market update, talk about some good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, in Q, so Q futures. There's no doubt about it. This is a concerning look of a potential rising wedge that is broken down, created some inside bars, and potentially could keep flushing. I think that's the bad news. I think potentially there could be more uh, downside short term. However, I do still very strongly believe regardless of which candidate uh, wins that there is going to be a lot of upside heading into end of the year. So let's kind of take a look at those charts and do the levels. Once again, regardless of who you plan on voting for, I just trade charts, man. So that's how I'm going to continue to approach it. So I talked on, uh, let's see here, that would have been October the 17th. I said over the next probably about two weeks or so, I fully expected SPY to come down here and fill this common gap area. I still think there is potential for us to potentially uh, sweep this 565 level. If we do that, let's say tomorrow, if we come down and we sweep that, we would just want a very quick recovery. 565 is not a level that we want to be trading under for any uh, long period of time. With the election, depending on how long it takes, uh, you know, great news would be regardless. Like I said, I, I think the market is going to do well regardless of who gets elected into uh, January of this next year. However, the longer it takes to find out who is going to be the next president, um, you know, we talk a lot about the market doesn't like uncertainty. So the longer that uncertainty is drawn out, the more potential chop and downside that we could have. Also, you know, not to be overshadowed by this election, we also have uh, the big Fed meeting uh, for interest rate decisions, that's going to be on Wednesday. So we have election Tuesday. We have uh, the Fed meeting and Powell speech on Wednesday. Overall, the Fed has been relatively dovish. I expect them to uh, maintain that stance overall. So on SPY, I do think there is a possibility of us, let's say maybe tomorrow or even Tuesday, coming down and dipping our toe into this uh, 565 level. Uh, those of you that follow me on Twitter, which if you haven't done so, please do so. Call an underscore Gladman. That's going to be the easiest way. If I think anything changes dramatically, um, I put those updates out there on Twitter as fast as I possibly can. The, the safest time to enter a trade is once all stops have been taken out, right? So I and you are not the only ones that know how key this 565 level is. So if we do... Like I said, sweep below it. We just don't want to start trading. So we don't want a big nasty move down and then just kind of start trading underneath it. And then we get the next big nasty move down. Uh, we would want that to overall be a, a V-shaped recovery, if you will. Uh, very similar to what we saw back over here on 9-11. Um, I was anticipating potentially another move down here. But once you saw this volume come in, it was one of those days that we went from like down one and a half or two percent to to up two percent. It just doesn't happen. I said a significant bottom was put in here, so we just don't want to come down here and start trading once again back down or below these levels. So I think potentially there's still one more sweep below that 565 level. So what does that mean for Q? Well, on Q, I think maybe we could come down to around that 471 level. I think that's about as low as we would possibly see. Uh, potentially even kind of this 477 level. Uh, the reality is, is um, after that ugly Thursday candle that we got, really all we've gotten is some inside bars uh, the last two days. So what you want to be looking for, if you're bearish, you'd want to be looking for a close below Thursday's low. If you're bullish, you want to see a close above that Thursday high. That's how you really can kind of get a feel for where the trend might be taking you. But overall, we've just been bouncing around between 485 to 490, and that's what I continue to expect to happen uh, as of right now. Like I said, if we do dip below, if we do go for that 565 level on SPY, that would probably be bringing us down to that 480, 477 level on Q. So that's where you'd want to see that bounce. On IWM, overall, this ascending triangle is still holding. 
Um, IWM was the uh, you know top performer today, which once again was good. Um, I've talked at nauseum about this 218 level. It held up really well today. If you want to be bullish on those small mid caps, that's what you want to see. Um, it did push up above that Thursday bar. However, it didn't close above it. So I um, still want to see that push back up towards the 225 level on IWM. You start getting above that level, then I think you look good up towards that 233 level. Um, Tesla is a stock that I trade quite often. It caught a bounce today on its all-time high trend line. So from all the way back over here in November of 2021, uh, sometimes when people are like, dude, why does my all-time high trend line not match up with yours? Please make sure your chart is in log. Um, and that'll that'll be the difference level. So the first level I would have liked to have seen hold was this 250 level. Um, obviously, we didn't get that today, but we did get a nice bounce. Um, so the swing trade that I've got going on in Tesla, um, I added both Tesla and TSLL, which is the, the bull uh, ETF for Tesla. I like to see this hold here. I would like to see us challenge. If not, the next big level that just really needs to hold right, is going to be back over here um, at around this uh, 240 level, or excuse me, uh, 232 level. So you can see that was all the resistance and the support from back over here in July of 2024. Plus, when we start looking left, you can see just how often Tesla has traded around that 230 level. Obviously, uh, Elon has uh, hitched his wagon to Trump. So if Trump wins, I think that Tesla can easily see 300 by the end of the year. If uh, Trump does not win, then Tesla can easily see a, a big capitulation move uh, to the downside. So uh, if you're bullish on Tesla, what I do like about this post earnings sell off is the volume has been relatively low. Then we kind of get a spinning top candle here. Volume starts increasing, but a candle setup is only as good as its follow through. If we can get a close back above that key level of 250, overall, I will start feeling good about Tesla again in the uh, short term. Downside, yeah, you certainly want to see this all time high trend line hold right here. If not, definitely that 230 level is going to be the next uh, key level to see a bounce. On coin, I've been talking a lot about this one. Came down here, if you'll notice, took out this imbalance that I've been talking about for weeks now, um, held it 618. Uh, however, you want, I mean, obviously you want to see this hold, right? So uh, this was a post earnings move right here, which uh, coin obviously got sold off uh, pretty hard the uh, day after earnings, but it's holding its key level as of right now. As long as it keeps holding, I would say if you start to get a close below that uh, post earnings sell off, that's going to be your red flag. I think crypto is still going to do very well into the end of the year. It's come back to the discount zone. Now, what you want to see is you want to see that push up and start to regain that key level of 212. Um, as far as NVIDIA goes, I like that it held uh, its 135, 136 level. If NVIDIA does start to sell off, I still think potentially, so if we get that like 477 level on Q, things like that, I think NVIDIA potentially could come down to 130. But so long as NVIDIA holds above 130, overall, it's in bullish territory. Um, and always keep in mind, if you do anything with that, they do still have uh, earnings ahead of them. But I like NVIDIA holding that 135, 136. Starts to lose that. Potentially, you could swing uh, some puts down to the 130 level. However, me personally, I would probably just wait to see how around that 130 level reacts. Anywhere between 131, excuse me, uh, 132 to 130, I think is a very viable dip uh, in NVIDIA. Uh, still holding up relatively well compared to what Enron, I mean, SMCI uh, is doing. And obviously, we'll get more information. I believe SMCI, let me just pull that up real quick, does have earnings. Uh, let's see here. Yes, tomorrow. Uh, so that that's going to be big. Uh, SMCI has come all the way back down here to where it you know traded sideways for let's see here that was I mean pretty much a year no about six months or so. So I mean this thing is yeah I mean and their Nvidia is like third biggest customer so obviously SMCI is going to be key to Nvidia's success or downfall coming up. Uh, Peloton. This is one I talked a lot about on Twitter. So you had this falling wedge, then you had the breakout, the ascending triangle, had good earnings, now is above this key level of about 677. I still really like it. I think any dips 
back towards that 677 if we look on a daily basis and when in doubt look left you can see how important this support resistance flip is right in here um, I'm kind of treating this as just a post earnings gap up play uh, the peg play so I really think that as the 921 EMA start to catch up overall um, you obviously had that big move post earnings now you've had some low volume pullback uh, but really it's not even pulling back that much you know compared to what the uh, market has been doing so just let those 921 daily EMAs catch up uh, whether you're swinging shares calls um, I still think that it, it looks really good um, probably pushing up towards you know that that 14 to 17 uh, ballpark range here relatively quickly uh, AMD after failing to flip that 164.50 area post earnings, um, I've talked a lot about these two big liquidity pools down here. I think, especially if like Nvidia comes down to that 130 area, I don't think there's any question. AMD is going to come down here and take this out. Um, if not, that's kind of your next big key spot. Is right around that 135 level to kind of see how it interacts you want to uh, this one for me is kind of a you know don't catch the falling knife so to speak you want to see some reversal style looking candles some stopping volume um, some capitulation volume that kind of stuff before just jumping into a trade so I do think it's one to keep on watch I personally am just setting a level right down in here and, and we'll wait and see what happens once we get there uh, Google I still like this setup a lot had great earnings coming down retesting that inverse head and shoulder neckline um, I still think if the market recovers, Google is going to see a nice uh, end of the year push. Um, also, too, you know, if, if Harris winds up winning the election uh, with big tech, I think this is one that could do well um, and maybe even get an outsized move if she winds up winning. Uh, Amazon did exactly what I wanted to for earnings, pushed back up here towards the all time highs. Now it came down, uh, retested that level the day before earnings. Um, caught a nice little push up uh, pretty much same thing as Peloton right just let those daily EMAs catch up but overall I think Amazon is going to do well into the end of the year you just want to see it holding these previous highs around that 195 area right so when in doubt you're just looking for what was previous resistance now we want to see that holding as support and you can clearly see here it, it bounced right off these previous highs in September today so uh, might trade a little bit of sideways here uh, might even dip down a little bit more towards the nine if we get those pullbacks like I was talking about in the market but overall I really like the look of Amazon going into the end of the year uh, Oclo it's another nuclear name that I've talked about a lot did not hold the 2250 so instead came back down here just like I've been talking about with Amazon and a lot of these other names you've seen here lately, want to see that support resistance flip. So this was its uh, previous daily supply area from May of 2024. Now it's been holding up. Uh, Uclo had a real nice push today after a strong sell-off. Really nice push into the end of the day. Would like to see it uh, recapture that daily nine and then continue to push up. But as long as 1850 holds, overall, I think it still looks uh, fine. If you do push up, you know, we don't talk just about the upside around here. If you do push up and start finding some resistance, watch out for a daily head and shoulder to build out. But your big support, like I said, is right down here in this uh, 1850 area. Uh, Celsius is a name that has earnings, I believe, Wednesday uh, before open. I've been talking a lot about that. I do have a swing position going in uh, Celsius as of right now. This uh, kind of slanted inverse head and shoulder is playing out exactly like what I want to see. But the reality is it's kind of a make or break come earnings. So um, I think if it does well on earnings, we'll be back easily above uh, in these in these mid to upper 30s. Um, if it doesn't do well, obviously we're going to start looking for support a little bit lower, probably coming back down into that 25 range. Uh, Wolf, this is a crypto name. I've been talking a lot with my team uh, in the Discord. As of right now, the big bear gap down from uh, April of 2022 is still showing resistance. So came back up here. You know, this is where you always get people going, oh, there, you know, there's nothing but air here, right, right here. And while that is true from a volume profile, um, this was still an obvious point where a lot of shorts uh, had entered the game. So this is a clear and obvious resistance point. So it might need to come down and refuel. Had a nice pennant breakout. So I still think even if it comes all the way down to like 525, um, this high right over here in September. Also 
from a Fibonacci standpoint, that is the 0.5 retracement. So even if it comes down to that 0.5 level, overall, I still think Wolf uh, could look pretty good here into the year um, as another uh, crypto name. And then Victoria's Secret, been talking a lot about this one, had another really nice day, is up about, I think, 17, 18% since I first started talking about that. Same thing, wanna see that support resistance flip. Very nice overall double bottom. If we look at it on a weekly, a clear and obvious weekly breakout from uh, its all-time highs. You had multiple rejections, so I still think this is one um, that is potentially heading back to that, that mid-40s. You're gonna run into a lot of supply up in there, but right now I still think this has got some room to run. Probably gonna be a little sticky around that 35 area, but overall, um, and they do have earnings coming up, so always be conscious of that. But overall, this is absolutely one that looks like it's gone through, you know, kind of marked down and is going through an accumulation phase, moving up into a, um, a SOS phase. And last but not least, let me pull up Palantir because they had earnings today and did very well. Um, so I posted on Twitter and I was wrong about that. I thought uh, Palantir probably wouldn't have a good earnings day and would come back down to around the 38 ballpark. Clearly that didn't happen. So now you're in price exploration territory. I talked about how uh, 45 was gonna be good resistance. You can see that's what happened. And I really thought we would, even with earnings, continue to uh, distribute on down. Uh, but they had a really nice earnings. So now any dip, so let's say it opens up and then it sells off, which I'm pretty sure last earnings, no, it, it did the opposite. It gapped down and then and then pushed up. But I know I had a day on earnings that it just kind of sold off once it. No. All right, maybe I'm wrong. So anyway, what you'd want to see is if you do get any type of like opening sell-off tomorrow, once you get around this previous support resistance, that previous all-time high, you just want to see support in that area. Show support around 45. It's a great opportunity to at least... Um, you know, buy the dip, if you will. So uh, they had great earnings. I think it was up like 30% year over year and guided up uh, into the next quarter. So obviously getting rewarded for it. So congratulations if you are uh, in this stock. Uh, I've been in it since about 17, since I was posting, saying, and, and this is kind of what I'm talking about with Victoria's Secret, right? Uh, Palantir had this inverse head and shoulders down here. Clearly went through accumulation phase, moved up to a sign of strength phase, and now is getting marked up out there. I'm not saying that's exactly what's going to happen with Victoria's Secret, but this is exactly the type of setups that you want to look for. Uh, Coin was another one that clearly went through this as well, right? So think of like, like the Peloton chart that I just posted, right? Here was Coin. Went through accumulation, moved up to SOS, now going through its markup phase. So just those are the, you know, if you're a purely long investor, you want to see those type of charts uh, playing out that go through that accumulation, long-term accumulation, and then uh, back into its markup phase. So hope this was helpful to you. Um, we'll check back in over the next couple of days with election and FOMC. Um, for me personally, I added a little bit to my uh, Tesla swing trade today, but other than that, I'm going to kind of let the chips, you know, fall where they may, see what happens, and then make decisions based off of that. All right. Much love. I will catch you guys in the next video. Uh, please like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow me on Twitter. And no matter what, regardless of what your opinion is, regardless of what my opinion is, exercise your right to vote tomorrow. Um, in my opinion, that's one of the most precious things that we have uh, in this country. And so anyway, I, I hope you get out and do it. All right, guys. Have a good one.